Welcome back to another edition here of the Washington Football Maniacs YouTube channel here. My name is Greg Sykes. I am here with my friend and cohort, uh, Scotty, right here. And we are going to talk defense on this episode. We talked offense on the last episode. We gave our over and unders on that one. Today, we are talking defense. So get ready for that. And with all of that said, let's get into this edition here. So, all right, man, what do you think? So we're talking about defense. Now, of course, we had a little bit of change in personnel on defense. Uh, not a whole lot, but a little bit. Um, we picked up what, well, you know, in our first round, Emmanuel Forbes. Uh, now, of course, he wasn't the main pick that all of us Washington Commanders fans were, were truly wanting. Uh, and, and I don't know, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know if that is because that a lot of us tend to go by the, the big names that we hear in college football, or if it's just because that we're Commanders fans and we've got to hate every pick that the Commanders, <laughs> you know, pick. Uh, but um, Emmanuel Forbes, he was our, our, our first rounder. And, um, you know, he's kind of likened to, of course, uh, uh, Fred Smoot came out of the same college as Fred Smoot. Uh, you know, kind of undersized guy, but uh, many feel that he's going to be kind of a ball hawker. hawker. So, um, I'll tell you, uh, what do you think the over and under is going to be for him? We're thinking maybe three interceptions. Uh, give me your over and under for that. Man, that's a, that's a good question because um, looking at Emmanuel Forbes, yes, I was one of those people that kind of were looking at Christian Gonzalez. But I, I kind of agree with you. You know, we kind of look at the big college guys. You know, Mississippi State is kind of that one of those schools where are kind of gray area. You know, they have good years, but, you know, they're not, you know, as far as the SEC, they're not up there with your Alabamas. And, you know, but they do have a good program. Um, So I didn't see a lot of tape till I started scouting. Emmanuel Forbes, but I mean, I believe he has five career interceptions for touchdowns at Mississippi State. Uh, ball hawk. I think the only concern I ever had about Emmanuel Forbes was just his body. You know, he's kind of on the smaller side, uh, strength. You know, tackling needs to be an emphasis going into training camp. But ball hawking wise, wow. I mean, I'm very excited about, you know, his ball hawking skills, man. You know, he can really find the ball. So, and, you know, even then, do I really necessarily want him to add weight because it's going to knock a lot of speed? So, you know, I guess. Kind of a little cook, you know, see where he's at, how he acclimates to the NFL game. But um, over under three interceptions, man. Wow. Um, I'm rocking with over three. I think he can get anywhere from four to five. I think he is that impressive of a ball hawk. And I can I, and I think he can fit nicely next to Fuller and St. Juice, man. And I think this secondary could be a very underrated uh group going into next year. I mean, obviously, overall, the commanders are very slept on right now. We're not the favorite amongst any of the analysts, you know, NFL network, ESPN, but um, we, we kind of talked about the last episode where the NFC is just not that league that it was dominant like it used to be. There's been a lot of changes as far as quarterback or personnel in the NFC. You know, um, I'm about to say St. Louis, Lord Hammers, uh, the Los Angeles Rams, they took the, you know, they, they traded Jalen Ramsey. You know, it's kind of up in the air how they're going to respond this year after kind of taking a step back after the Super Bowl. Um, you know, again, New Orleans, you know, new quarterback. The list goes on, you know, as far as our division, Philadelphia is obviously that you know, all roads go through Philly. Unfortunately, as, yeah. as much as it hurts my soul to oh, say that. I hate to hear that. Please, <laughs> please don't, Brandon, man. Oh, yeah, but you're right. You're right. But I mean, you got you to kind of give credit where it's due. Philadelphia has done a great job adding talent through trade, free agency, and the draft. Um, so they're going to be a really, really tough test for this team going forward. But I mean, the Giants, I don't think, I think the Giants take a step back. I mean, it's always health. Saquon Barkley is always injury away. Um, Darren Waller, new addition to tight end where he, you know, he can catch the ball like a, a wide receiver, but can he stay on the field? Um, you know, how does Jones respond to this season? So I'm very intrigued to see, you know, where New York does. I don't think they're going to be as good as last year. I think last year was one of those years where the league was kind of adapting to them and their new coach. Um, and look at that Dallas. I mean, I hope Dallas loses every game. I would care less for oh, that, but, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we are very slept on. So, I'm saying definitely over three interceptions for Emmanuel Forbes. Yeah, Brandon, you know, I, I think I agree with you on that because uh, for one thing, 
you know, Emmanuel being the rookie, they're going to try him early on, especially if he is starting. And, uh, well, regardless, even if he's not starting, it, even if he's a guy who's going to kind of come off the bench and play uh, in a couple of, you know, special packages or whatever uh, early on, they're going to try him. Uh, they want to see what the, the guy's got. You know, if he's a shutdown corner, then prove it. Go out there and play it. And um, so, you know, they're going to they're going to try him. And I think he's going to have a lot of opportunities to to get those picks and to get those picks early. Um, so I don't think that three interceptions is, uh, you know, nothing to scoff at at all. As a matter of fact, I think it's going to be more than that. I, I think by the end of the season, he will collect quite a few of those. Um and, yeah, I, I mean, you know, going back to the draft, when they drafted him, it was one of those, uh, okay, you know, because I'll be honest with you, I didn't do my homework on, on Forbes, so I had no idea what to expect. Um, but, you know, I, I and I remember making this comment uh, back in, in one of my uh, earlier videos uh, around the draft, and I could just hear it now. People are like, I can't believe you're comparing him to Daryl Green. And I'm like, yeah, you're, you, I'm not comparing him to a Hall of Famer. I'm just kind of comparing the situation, right? You know, Daryl Green was an undersized guy. And he turned out to be a Hall of Famer. I mean, you know, Daryl Green was pretty much shut down. Um, you know, I mean, teams time and time again would try him and would fail most more times than not. So, um, you know, that, that was my only comparison to Daryl Green. It's just basically the, uh, the sense of being undersized. So um, I'm excited to see what, what Forbes brings to the table. And uh, I, I hope that whatever uh, any of the fans that were kind of disgruntled with, uh, the pick. I, I hope he proves them wrong, and I think those fans hope they're proven wrong as well. And uh, I guarantee you that probably around midseason, half of those fans will probably have his jersey. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, um, I agree. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. You go ahead. Um, no, I, I was going to say I, I totally agree with you. I, I think he's very slept on. I think yeah. you know his ball hawking, his the video, just his instincts. Says a lot about him, man. You know, like I said, I kind of wanted him because the modern day NFL corner, you know, it's not like it used to be where you're just a ball hawk and you didn't want to expect to tackle. You know, a lot of your corners can hit somebody. So that was my big thing with him. You got to add size, but then you don't want to substitute muscle because you're going to lose speed. So if speed's right. his game, let him do his thing, you know, especially because I think I, I definitely think he fits next to Fuller and St. Juice perfectly. You know, I, I definitely think he does. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, and I know that there's still kind of a question mark with Fuller as far as um, is he even going to make the team? You know, could he could he be a camp casualty? Uh, you know, because we have been kind of stockpiling uh, secondary uh, DBs and stuff like that, you know, trying to get younger. Um, now, I would like to hang on to Fuller. I think moving him into the inside uh, would be uh, really good for the secondary. Um I like Fuller. Uh, I think that Fuller is more effective on the inside, and I think having somebody uh, like Forbes on the outside, then as you alluded to, uh, Benjamin, Benjamin St. Juice on the other side, and then you got your other safeties uh, like uh, Cameron Curl. I, I think I think the secondary is slept on, um, I, and I think you know for the first time we have um, a solid, possibly a very solid secondary to complement our uh, defensive line. And uh, so, and I think that's a good segue into our defensive line. And especially one man that we want to talk about, the big question mark right now, Chase Young. So we're going to do an over and under for Chase Young. Sacks. Do you, what do you think the over and under is going to be for Chase Young with sacks? I'm thinking – that number is around five. So, Brandon, what do you think, buddy? Oh, man, very, very, very good question because there's a lot of speculation whether, you know, Pittsburgh was a rumored destination to trade. Um, his fifth-year option was declined. So this is a make-it-or-break year for Chase Young. Um, the talent's there. It's just 
you know, injuries, uh, inconsistency has really bit him. You know, as a local guy, you know, much touted in the draft, you know, a lot of people after the fact, oh, you know, always after the fact said, oh, you know, why didn't we get, you know, Justin Herbert? But it's easier to say that in, in you know, line side. But um, I, I still agree with the, the pick. I think at that point you had to go with Chase Young. Um, but, you know, no pun intended, but the ball's in his court. He's got to he's got to respond this year over and under five sacks. I, you know, I like Chase. You know, I think he's going to respond this offseason. I, I see him. Getting at five, if not maybe one over. Now I know because <laughs> I think that he's going to respond. Wow. Yeah, well, I mean, because I think you know, you kind of look at the psychology of the player, man. You know, he's, he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. You know, just the fact that they declined his fifth year option and he's already been in trade talks, he's going to respond to that. So I think definitely he's going to be five and over, man. You know, I, I I agree with you in the fact that I think he's going to respond, um, and I think. Chase Young, there, there's more to his game than just sacks. Um, I think he's a multi-dimensional, and I think that he may not necessarily get to that number, but he's going to wreak havoc. Um, like you say, he's going to play with a chip on his shoulder, so he's not always going to get to the quarterback, but he's going to play smart. Um, there, because here's the thing. I kind of go back to uh, the days of um, Dexter Manley. You know, Dexter oh. Manley was a beast. And there were times, if you go back and watch um, the Super Bowl against the Denver Broncos, uh, the Denver Broncos used his aggressiveness against them um, in that first half. Uh, there were plays where they just let Dexter Manley have a free shot toward John Elway. And by the time the Dexter got there, he realized that they did like a draw play or shovel pass or something. And Dexter's like, what in the world happened? And, you know, the Broncos had like a big, uh, you know, play for, you know, 10, 15, 20 yards up the field. So sometimes you, as a defensive end, you got to leverage your aggressiveness uh, with playing smart football. And so I think that um, playing with the chip on your folder can be uh, on your shoulder can be a good, but it can also be a detriment to um, to how successful you can be. And I think for uh, Chase Young, he needs to know how to balance that. So I think that in order for him to really show uh, the coaching staff uh, that he is worth that first round draft pick that he needs to go out there and play smart in all facets of that position. So, you know, it's not just going after the quarterback, but it's, it's breaking up the play. It's, it's breaking up those screen passes. Um, it's getting after it's dropping back into coverage because sometimes we've seen him do that. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's snuffing out run plays. It's snuffing out, I think I did say screen passes. So, I mean, you know, it's a little bit of all of that. So I'm not quite sure if I'm going to give him five sacks, but I think I'm going to give him the opportunity to show that he is disruptive in all facets of that um, of that position. Oh, I totally agree, man. And that kind of brings up another perspective, which is who's going to put him in the best position to be successful? Del Rio, which – Let's be real. If it wasn't for Scott Turner, he'd be that guy that people would be screaming to get fired because yep. inconsistency on his defensive end has been his MO, especially a couple of years ago when it felt like we were giving up a 50 yard pass every game. So it's just, yeah. this, you know, looking at the schemes, you know, the personnel to fit those schemes, you know, looking at William Jackson, the third, that was the big failure with him coming to DC, which was, it wasn't a talent thing. It was, he was in the wrong scheme and it really set him up for failure. You know, so, it was, you know, I, I want to look, you know, I really want to see Del Rio put Chase in the position to be successful. And the biggest thing is you're right. He, you know, often than not the last couple of years, he was on the speed side. He, you know, he was speed, but they let him do that. And they kind of push him out of the play, you know, so he's got to learn some more moves as far as, you know, getting in there and getting to the quarterback. So, you know, it behooves both Jack Del Rio and Chase Young to put themselves in the best positions to succeed. Because really for both of them, the spotlight's on both of them. Because, you know, if this year does not go well, you know, the real could be out, you know, Rivera could be out, and you very well could see the last of Chase Young in DC. So this is definitely a showing out year for 
a lot of people in this roster, but especially on the defensive end. So, no, I, I hope the best for Chase, man. You know, like I said, local guy, you like to see a local guy succeed for this team. Um, but the, it's on him to perform because, in you know, injuries, all that is, is – it happens, and you have to perform. You have to bounce back, and it shows professionals. Especially, I know he was getting a hit for not coming in for you know voluntary workouts, and I get it, it's voluntary, yeah. you know, and it's, you know, and that's why I didn't sweat it too much. It's voluntary, but still, you want to see him kind of get incorporated with the defense and a lot of the new additions. So, hey, it's in his court, and that's kind of where I'm at with Chase, man. You know, he, it's up to him to take that leap this season. Yeah, and you know, you also got to think too. Uh, this is a contractor year for Montez Sweat as well um so that that's another factor to decide into this because Vontez Sweat's going to be uh going in there and proving that he's worth a big contract and um which honestly that that bolts well for the team when you have your bookends there uh competing on who's going to get to the quarterback first and uh if neither one of them are are getting to the quarterback first then you've got the inside guys, Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne to deal with. So um, there's plenty of opportunities for a lot of sacks between all of those guys. But yeah, Montez Sweat, he, he's, a, he's another guy um, that is going to be trying to uh, get into the contract talks as well. So uh, Chase Young, yeah, he's got his work cut out for him. Uh, but I definitely hope that he has a Deron Payne year this year and gets paid. And gets paid by us because I would love to keep our guys that we draft and develop them. Um, I don't want to see Chase Young, you know, go into another team and become a Hall of Famer. <laughs> you know, that would leave a very – no matter what our um, uh, future, no matter how bright our future is ahead of, of this franchise, that would still leave a little bitterness in, in, in my uh, mouth on that. So – because, uh, I mean, Chase Young's one of my favorite players, so um, I really want him to have a good year, really do. Um, so moving on from Chase Young, all right, so we've talked about the defense fins or uh, the defense uh, defensive line, I should say, and the secondary, but we're, we're skipping the middle. So uh, the guy who, who kind of um, just really – got his uh, his head rocked uh, last year at the beginning of the season, Jamie Davis, and uh, was like, you know what? I'm not getting yelled at anymore. I'm going to I'm going to show you guys that I'm worth it. Played a pretty solid year last year, really stepped his game up. So what's the over under of Jamie Davis getting 50 to 75 tackles this year? Oh, good question. Um. Between those marks, um, hmm, I, I think he responds. Um, I think that Jamie Davis is one of those situations where he's had to be developed. You know, when he came out of the draft, he wasn't exactly ready to be that starter yet. We had to develop him because um, even if you look at Kentucky, he was a, still a little raw. But I think he's been developed. You know, they gave him playing time and he's developed right. I think he very well could get to 75. I, I very well think he can get to 80. I think that he's going to respond this year because you see the instincts. You know the instincts are solid with this um with this kid, man. Uh, I think that he he's going to respond, and I think overall, man, you know overall this defense is going to respond. I think this is going to be a very good team. You know, obviously with the you know, and this is a whole other conversation. You know, with the offensive side being you know kind of acclimating to Sam Howe, but this defense is solid. I mean, it's mostly intact. You know, you, we've had guys come in and you know in and out here and there. You know, as far as you know, losing um, uh, Cole Holcomb and um adding you know Emmanuel Forrest but most most of the defense has played together for two three years so chemistry is a big you know big thing especially in football you know chemistry you know working together so I think that that's going to show this year you know Jack that real uh, I hope so <laughs> I've been very tough on him man I mean you know I go to games I go to I'm, I go to almost every home game man and I've been one of those guys yelling at Jack that real especially two years ago giving up all those passes man I was ready for him rightfully so yeah rightfully <laughs> oh. so yeah you know, I've been tough on Jack, man, but, you know, Jack had he had a decent year last year. You know, when, you know whatever the uh, deficiencies was not on him. So I do see a strong showing from his defense overall, and I think it's going to start with Jamie Davis. He responds this year. I think I'm definitely going over 75. I think he gets around 80, 80-ish tackles this year. I think he's going to be very um, active. I think he's going to be very active. Um, 
I think I agree. I, I think that year three, Jamie Davis is going to really come out of his shell, and I think he's going to be all over the place. Um, you know, I hope that he reminds me of somebody that we had uh, years ago. I'm going to go travel back in time to the glory years, uh, but toward the end of there, uh, Wilbur Marshall, when we picked him up from Chicago, uh, that dude was all over the field. I mean, he was he was in the backfield making tackles. Um, he would go out and coverage and cover tight ends down the field. Heck, he even covered wide receivers. He didn't care. Uh, he played ball. And I want to see Jamie Davis doing the same thing. Um, I want to see him trying to pick up some speed and, um, you know, seeing how that he can um, cover from side to side of the field, see how quickly he can do that. Um, so um, I, I agree. I think he's going to be involved in the tackles. I think he's going to be over there. And, you know, you mentioned Cole Holcomb, and I tell you, I was so sad to see that mullet go. I mean, I, I just uh, – I, I was almost so sad, like, I didn't even care how, how well he played. I just – I enjoyed the mullet. I don't know. I just uh, – my wife hates mullets, but I love them. Um, but, uh, you know, Cole Holcomb was a very solid player for us at, at linebacker. And, and uh, so we picked up who I um, – feel like is his clone he's he's got kind of the same build the kind of the same style of play and the same stats cody barton um do you think he's going to kind of pick up where cole holcomb left off absolutely i think that he was probably one of the best under the radar signings in nfl period you know he He's coming out of a situation where, you know, defense is always the MO over in Seattle. Now, obviously, they don't, they're not the Legion of Boom anymore, and it's a whole different, you know, but the coaching over there has always emphasized a defensive team. Defense wins championships. Um, I think he's going to come over here, and he's going to be very, very underrated. I, I love his motor, man, and that's the biggest thing. Just like Cole Holcomb, that motor, that, you know, that kicking in the second gear. You know, I, I always remember that um, – the interception against Dallas, the Cole, Cole Holcomb got and brought it back for a touchdown, man. You know, he's got that motor to him, so I, I kind of see – Cody um Barden being the same thing. He's gonna be that guy's gonna be all over the place. And that's why I'm very, very excited about his linebacker group because you know, we obviously we always talk about the D line, and rightfully so. You know, all the monies and you know, the you know, defensive tackles, you know, we're looking at Chase and Montrez and trying to and I always been a believer that we couldn't afford all four. We're probably gonna afford maybe three out of the four, but it's you know, that's always been the the marquee part of the defense, right? And then you know, we talk about the secondary, especially with fours coming in. But you know, keep an eye out for this linebacker core. I think they're going to be a really, really good linebacker court, and it's going to be surprising a lot of people around the NFL because, again, we are so slept on as a team, especially the defense. You know, the offense, you know, a lot of it goes towards, you know, having a guy who's not a rookie but, you know, hasn't started that much. But the defense, I think a lot of people are looking at as being that core group to really be that group that be consistent and to perform. Because even when the – because the offense is going to go through the growing pains. The defense has got to be able to step up and kind of – cover the six of the offense you know what i'm saying because they're gonna have they're gonna they're gonna be on the field a lot more because especially within the first six weeks this offense is gonna go through his um growing pains so you know this defense is gonna look I, you heard it here first i'm gonna predict this is gonna be a top 10 defense next year because i have that much i have that much faith in this defense now it really you know there's things that could change that i'm hoping jack that real steps up as far as coaching man it really this is his time to shine but no nah, Cody Barton is going to have a good year and Jamie Davis is going to step up. So I'm very optimistic, man. And I'm going to get well, hit I, for it, but I, I hope so because you, you got to think how ironic it is that um, we got two, uh, well, what I consider head coaches on the uh, coaching staff, Ron Rivera and Jack Del Rio, who are played linebacker in the NFL. <laughs> So you would think if there were any positions that they would make sure were solidified, it would be the linebacker positions. And those positions were really, you know, that, that core group had been the kind of the question mark on defense. So it was kind of unusual that we would have question marks there. And uh, I think Jamie Davis, like I said, kind of came out of his shell last year and started answering some of those questions. And, but you can't have just Jamie Davis. You got to have some other guys in there to compliment him and, and to assist him. And so um, I'm hoping that uh, Cody Barton uh, can pick up where uh, Holcomb left off and, um, you know, just 
as well as some of these other guys who um, have kind of been on the team, uh, been on the practice squad, uh, but have showed out in OTAs and are really looking to make, uh, you know, that next step. Uh, let's see, maybe we start talking about those guys. So um, I agree with you. I think this defense, at least on paper, I mean, everything looks solid uh, to me. I mean, uh, there's no reason why that this defense can't be at least a top 10 defense, maybe even top five by mid season. Um, so we will see, man, I, I'm excited about the defense just as much as I'm excited about uh, some of the things I see on the offense. Um, but honestly, I think Ron Rivera and company, they have done their absolute best in this off season to, build this team and to bring in the talent they think they need coaching as well as players uh, to really have as successful of a 2023 campaign as they possibly can have. And so we're, we're slowly getting to that point to where we're getting close to training camp and it's rubber meets the road. So there you go, man. Um, so Folks, that, that's pretty much it for this this video as far as uh, the defense. You guys, you know, let us know in the comments. Do you agree with us? Do you think we are totally insane? Well, maybe don't say that we're completely insane. Don't don't hurt my feelings. But you know, <laughs> just let us know in the comments below. What do you think? Um, do you agree with us? Uh, is there anybody else that we haven't mentioned that you would like to talk about in the comments? Let us know. And as well, let us know if you enjoyed this video. Please um, like it, comment on it, and share it with your friends. Um, let's just start getting excited about this next season, man, because guess what? This is the last week of June, and that means that we're getting so close to football season. I mean, I'm getting excited over that. Uh, Brandon, I know you're getting excited over that. Um, I know you're a Washington Wizards fan, though, so I know you're always excited over basketball. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm with me with football, I am constantly excited over football. So if I have nothing to talk about with football, I'll go back and watch the old Super Bowl. So uh, that's that's where I'm at. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I need the commanders to be good this year because my Nats are rebuilding and the Wizards are rebuilding. So. <laughs> I need some yeah. competitive spirit from the commanders. So, so yeah, I you've think got to have the commanders to talk about, right? Got to have oh, the commanders to talk about. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll hit a trifecta coming up the next uh, couple of years where all three teams are going to be the team to beat. That, that I would love to see Washington finally have something like that up there in the D.C. era. It's been way too long for that. Really has. Really has. Well, buddy, um, I think that's going to do it for us tonight. Got anything to say as we go? Oh, no, sir. Lo loving the dialogue, man. Um, Definitely let us know how we did, uh, what you guys agree with, don't agree with. But uh, we're going to have a lot of good content this season yeah. going forward, man. So definitely tune in and strap up, because we're going to be ready to rock for the 2023 NFL season. Absolutely. And please uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Washington Football Maniacs YouTube channel. I'm Greg Sykes, along with my buddy co-host, uh, Brandon Scott. And with that said, we will see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.